Backing up your data is extremely important. That's why I'm a big fan of online backup services because they allow you to automate that process so you're not dependent on someone uh, remembering to make the backup or caring enough to make the backup. It's fully automated. Um, so not only do you get a backup, but you get an off-site backup so you're uh, protected um, you know, in, in case of some kind of catastrophe. But as big a fan as I am of, of uh, online backups, uh, I also recommend that you use Peachtree's or Sage50's built-in backup feature. And you can do that manually by going to the file menu and going to backup and click backup and it'll let you give the file a name and, and it uh, creates a nice tidy you know, zip file for you. Um, but again, automating backups is always better um, so you're not dependent on, on someone remembering to do it. Um, or someone having to make time when no one else is, is in Sage 50 to make your backup. That's where the automatic backup scheduler comes in. A lot of you have probably seen it before because you've accidentally clicked on the shortcut on your desktop because it looks too much like the regular Sage 50 icon. But the easiest way to get to it is to open up your company in Sage 50, then go to the file menu and choose automatic backup. You'll get this window right here, and if you open it from inside of Sage 50, it will already have your company's directory selected in there. If you opened it from the desktop or through the start menu, you'll have to click browse and uh, and the find the folder yourself. And you'll notice that this is looking for the actual folder that holds your company, um, not the company folder, which is also referred to as your data path. Once you've got your company directory filled in there, you can choose where you want to save your backups to. Um, you could type it in or click Browse, and then just choose where where you want to save your backups. Then you put in your Sage 50 username, which it supplied automatically because I started out in my company, and then put in the password and type it again to confirm it and then click verify. Once it's verified that then you can move on to selecting your options. There's just a few down here. The first one is what you, uh, well the first one is whether you want the company name to be included in the backup file name. I recommend you, you do that even if you just have one company. It makes it easier to identify. And then you can choose if you want to include um, any archive companies, if you use the archive feature to make, say, a year-end copy, you can include those if you want, and you can include attachments if you want. Then over here, you can choose um, what you want to do if the backup file name already exists. You can create a new backup file, you can overwrite the existing backup file, or you can stop the backup process. I would normally create a new backup file, um, but Really, this conflict shouldn't come up very often since the date is included in the file name. The only time it should ever be an issue is if someone has manually created a backup during the day. Then this last setting is an important one. It's the logout settings. Um, if you check this box, then if someone has left Sage 50 open at the time that your scheduled backup is running, this will automatically log out that user couple of important things to know are that um, anyone who's still in Sage 50 at the time this runs um, will be logged out and they will not get any warning and any unsaved work that they have um, have open will be lost. But if you don't turn this on and someone is logged in at the time that uh, the backup runs or tries to run then you will not get a backup because everyone has to be out in order to um, to make the backup. So once you've got all your options set the way you want, then you click on the Save button at the top. And you can give this a name. And this name is just a name for the file that holds your backup settings. This is not the name of the backup itself. And as you can see, it creates this script down here. Uh, this actually works with Windows built-in task scheduler. So the next step is to actually schedule the backup. So if you click the schedule button at the top, then you'll be able to 
Um, you can set it for daily at a particular time, or maybe you just want it to run on weekdays. You can do that, and you're going to want to make sure you set it for some time when all your users are going to be out of the system. When you click OK, you'll be prompted to enter your Windows username and password. Um, one of the requirements of the Windows Task Schedule is that you have to be able to enter a password. So, say, uh, if you don't use passwords in your office, you will have to go out and set up a Windows password in order to be able to schedule this. So you'll enter your password, you'll click OK, and then at that point, your backup will be scheduled. It'll happen automatically, and um, and you'll be ready to go. Uh, a couple other um, things to think about is where you want to save your backup. Um, if you do not have an off-site backup, then you absolutely would want to save it to some drive other than the one that holds your Sage 50 data and ideally you would do it on you'd save it to a completely separate computer for example if your data is stored on a server then you would save that back up onto one of your workstations local drives that way if something happened to the server you would still have a safe copy of your data um, you know on the workstation um, if you have a good off-site backup either through tapes or an online backup system then it's less critical. You could save it wherever you want, but you still get an added measure of safety by, by saving it to a separate location. Anyway, um, just remember, however you want to do it, make sure you make a backup, and by automating it, you'll dramat dramatically increase the odds of it really happening.